Hi, I'm Astoria Luzzi for the Ryersonian, and today I'm here with the face of Ryerson Problems. So, um, you started this account in November 2011. What made you start it? To be honest, one day I was just sitting at home in bed, and I was procrastinating, trying not to do my finance homework. And I was just realizing, like, does anyone on Ryerson, the students, do they have a voice on campus? And I feel like it's something that we really need in today's generation. And just honestly for fun, I made this account called Ryerson Problems. And then I realized there was nothing else like it on campus. Um, I didn't think it would blow up and have as many followers as it did today. And after a couple of weeks, I'm like, I guess I'm sticking with this. So procrastination, really. So why did you decide to stay anonymous? Yeah, it was definitely a decision that um, I was thinking about over the last couple of years, but I think it was just better to stay hidden um, and just speak as a student and a student number here on campus. I know there's a lot of problems that a lot of people don't know who to go to, um, especially if it's something like a water pipe or, you know, there's a mess in the cafeteria or something like that. So being the platform, um, like Twitter, for students to be able to engage with is something that I definitely think that um, being hidden allowed me to do over this long period of time. All right. And so... You came to us and said that you are planning on giving the account up. What's the reason for that? Yeah, I actually have one more semester left in the fall and then I'm graduating. Um, so it definitely is something that's a little bit time consuming. Um, you definitely start to feel bad for a lot of people on campus, but it's very busy during exams, court detention, things like that. And my phone is constantly dying. I cannot go through one day with a full battery on my phone. So I definitely think that it's time for maybe someone that's in second year or third year to maybe take over the account and just to continue that student voice on campus while I'm graduating. All right. And so I saw that you put out a tweet just last week yeah. um, <laughs> asking people to come forward and yeah. say that they wanted the account. How many responses have you had? I've had about 25 responses, uh, which is pretty good. A lot of those people are actually followers that I've had since the very beginning. So it's nice to see that people have followed through and are willing to continue this this tradition and Twitter account going. All right, and our last question. Yeah. Um, what would be your most memorable Ryerson problem tweet oh that you've gotten? Oh my goodness, <laughs> there's so many. Um, like I said, course intentions, exams, and the summer are probably the, actually the highest tweeting points that I have. Um, the, end of, the end of August, beginning of September, my phone's blowing up saying, oh my goodness, I don't wanna go back to school, things like that. But mm -hmm, there's a lot. Everything from the man that walks backwards to the man that screams Jesus loves you at Young and Dundas. But I think one of the highest points might have been actually last week when we had the snowstorm and Ryerson was unfortunately one of the only schools not to close. My phone was going crazy all day because people seem to think that I have the answer to if the school's going to close or not. And it was actually so high, um, the hashtag Ryerson problems, that I was a trending topic in Toronto, which is pretty cool. But definitely snowstorms, course intentions, and course enrollment, highest points set really get me going about virus and problems. Wow, well I know I've probably sent quite a few to yeah, you as well. you have. <laughs> and um, so we have not re yet revealed her face, but stay tuned and check out our paper on Wednesday and we'll tell you who the person behind virus and problems is.